Friends, I'd like to do a song for you. It's not necessarily a gospel song, but it's very inspirational to most of us. Um, it was written by a famous duo, Simon and Garfunkel. And I'm really nervous about this one, so I hope I do it okay. This one's called Bridge Over Troubled Water.
Okay, let's try that sound check again. And the kiss. <laughs> I'm Ben Klein from Spokane, Washington. Vanessa Klein from White Rock, British Columbia. Um, I was born in Vancouver, so I've been in British Columbia all of my life. Um, did a lot of moving from Whistler and different places. I lived in North Van for a lot of time of my younger years. And then um, I've been in White Rock for probably 10 years now. So, which is really nice. Um, yeah, I don't know, my, um, my stepdad was a priest in an Anglican church. And uh, so that was really kind of nice. I've always had a really um, like religious upbringing, like, well, you know, church every Sunday and, and uh, just, yeah, it's really kind of nice. I quite enjoyed that because not a lot of kids did that, I guess, growing up. There wasn't a lot of people who, that I knew that I went to school with that went to church a lot and stuff like that. So I guess that was nice, kind of going back and thinking about that. It's really, really nice. <laughs> and then? Um, well, I was born and raised in Spokane, Washington, and my dad's, you know, we've been in ministry as long as I can remember. I can remember actually being uh, like three years old on, on a local um, TV show that was a Christian TV show. And then my dad eventually went into doing that as well, and he became a full-time pastor. Um, and uh, so I've, I've always been raised in the church, and, and the religious side of it always been, has really been important to me, you know, the faith side of it. It's always been kind of a, a beacon, I'd say, in a very dark world that we live in. So um, I, I've, you know, been very blessed to be in music all of my life, and, and I never really traveled a whole lot until I got into what I'm doing now, you know, the music side of it. Um, but I always played music. I was sang all my life. I was raised in, like I said, I was raised in the church, and I played drums and bass guitar and, and uh, you know, did choir in high school and all of those things. So it's been nice to have the, the musical side, but as, as well as the faith side of it. So, yeah, it's been wonderful. Is there a... Um... I'm going to ask a, a mixture of music and faith questions all kind of wrapped up into that's one. That's fine. Mm -hmm. um, is there a hymn that's most meaningful to you, Vanessa, uh, from your growing up or from today? Ah, oh, I don't know. I just, I really, I love the, um, I don't have like a specific one that I really, really, that like kind of speaks to me. I just, I, I, I like hymns because it was a part of me growing up. And um, I love how just the class, like they're so classic. And I don't know, I just, I love the hymns, but I also really love gospel music. Cause you really feel like you see the passion that people have when they sing it. And uh, just like you can feel like, I don't know, like you can feel the presence of, of God when you sing it, I don't know. It's just, Is it's there really... one gospel song you really love? You gotta pick one. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, one that's particularly meaningful to you. Um, I think especially, I, I do really like How Great Thou Art. I think that's a great song. I just, and it's had just such a special, it's kind of been, I don't know, like that song's always around, you know, and it's just, I just, I really, quite like that song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about for you? Um, you know, like being raised in the worship music sense, I played drums like in, in, in the, the, this worship band for many years. And, and so we've, I mean, that's always been like my, something I always went back to, you know, to worship God in that sense. Um, the sense that some people worship God by, you know, um, you know, just whatever, however they choose to worship God. You know, there's all these different ways you can, but I have always gone back to the music sense, you know. Some people worship God by doing sermons, you know. Some people worship God by praying a lot. I, I do all of those things, kind of, but I really, but I find that the music sense really touches me, you know. And um, I, I'd probably say the song that always gets me every time that I really am emotional about is He Touched Me, probably. I, I just, that song to me is like, it's, it just talks about, just how God can just use anyone, you know, he can just, he touches you and like, can just change your whole life in, in just an instant, you know. And so I, I really find that that song really speaks to me a lot. So, yeah. Would you sing a few bars? Um, jeez, <laughs> uh, man, I gotta think about it. Um, Shackled by a heavy burden, 
Neath a load of guilt and shame Then the hand of Jesus touched me And now I am no longer the same For he touched me Oh, he touched me And oh, a joy that floods my soul Something happened And now I know he touched me and made me whole. It's a beautiful song. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And I thought all four of you uh, singing How Great Thou Art Sunday morning was just beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Special. I have it on video, by the way. Oh, thank you. That's wonderful. <laughs> so I, yeah, yeah. I may, I may send that back your way. Oh, I know. We'd love to see it. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Can you tell me about the moments where you where you felt his presence? Can you tell me anything more about that that time? Um, I guess we were we were doing a prayer group um, near the end of the weekend and just kind of praying about all the stuff and uh, it was just it was just this overwhelming feeling that everything was gonna be okay like just that really emotional like I just. I started crying and I don't know, it was just really, really very, like just a very, very happy, wonderful feeling. So at that prayer group, it was wonderful. And the hammering. The <laughs> coming. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, what about for you, Ben? What's your earliest memory of faith? When I, I think that the hardest time in my life was probably, because my family and I have a very close-knit relationship, as you've seen. You know, sometimes we, you know, I think with every family, there's hardships, there's bickering, you know, there's fighting. And I, and I think that's pretty normal. I mean, in, in a sense that every every family I've ever been in, you know, sometimes the saying is you, you hurt the ones you love the most. And you don't mean to, but it's just such a, it's such a sinful, natural way to do things. And then you say something you wish you hadn't, and then you go back and apologize and try to fix it. But um, I think the, the earliest time I've had, the hardest time was my mom was going through thyroid cancer. And it was, it was a, probably the darkest time in my life. I was very, very depressed, very dark, very gothic almost. You know, I went into this whole other persona almost you know and then it was me I'm, I'm a pretty happy person sometimes I'm sometimes I'm a bit pessimistic and it's good that she's the optimistic one because she's very optimistic all the time she's always the glass you know um, half full and I'm always the glass half empty you know I'm, I'm more of a realist and it's good that we kind of balance each other out but mom was going through thyroid cancer and it was just terrible for me because I, I really felt maybe she wouldn't make it through and we all prayed about it and stuff and um, and I'd say in a way, I almost lost some faith through that. But afterwards, when I saw God, God works, God's worked in my life so many different instances. Um, it would take like, a, you know, two or three days to actually go through every specific thing. But you always see God like working in your life. And I think sometimes the, the biggest problem is we always look for the big things instead of seeing the small things along the way. Because it's like God wants to slowly show us him. He doesn't sometimes just pop out to us and say, hey, here I am, you know. He, he kind of shows us one little thing, bring this person into our life that will bring us, you know, out of the depths a little bit, you know, kind of pull us out of the hole we're in. And so all these little things, you know, we might miss something here. We might not get a job or something here, but we, d down the line, it's much better for us. You know, it, it challenges us to be stronger. So I think when my mother was going through that time, I would say it's the, the time where I had the least faith, but at the same time, the most faith. Because I, I was, God was really the only one I was able to rely on through all that, you know. So I had to really um, trust in Him. And when it all came down, you know, she got completely cured of it, and and He really worked in our life, in our family, and stuff. So that's. What was the first time in your life where you feel like you had to rely upon God, or that you chose to rely upon God? I think probably, yeah, the past experience that I talked, just because it was like, I was, it was really hard, and that's probably the, like the hardest I've ever, like the hardest part of my life so far, I guess. I mean, I didn't really grow up having hardships, and if there was, I was probably too young to even, for it to even sink in or anything. 
Are you comfortable explaining what was going on for you? Um, <laughs> yes. Um, well, when we broke up, that was really hard for me. Um, cause I mean, you know, you think that you, well, you know that you're with your soulmate and then you're not together anymore. And it's, it's, it was just, it was really hard. Um, and I just felt like, you know, I had two of my really close friends had died kind of out of nowhere. And, um, and that was really like, it was a shock to everyone. And, uh, he, w um, the one, um, uh, man, Scott Wheeler, he was, um, basically like my acting mentor. And if, and I had known him since I was probably like, um, 12 or 13, basically when we first moved to White Rock and I was taking classes from him and he just became such a friend and I wouldn't even be in acting if it wasn't for him. So just kind of growing up with him and then all of a sudden he just like died out of nowhere and it was just so hard on everyone and my parents were on a trip and it was just like, it was a combination of so many things that just really hit me really hard. And then, um, you know, when you're like young teenager, you start to get into the party mode. And, um, I was partying a lot, which wasn't really something I really cared to do, but it kind of felt like that's kind of just to numb things, I guess. And, um, I pretty much was at my low, like a pretty low point in my life. And, um, I just, I, I just, I guess I just was really praying that that I would get over it and everything would be okay and that he would be with me and, and just really help me to get over what I was feeling and just just to basically to help everything to be okay. And that's all I wanted more than anything was just to like, please let this be okay, please let this be okay. And just, I want I don't wanna do this anymore. I don't wanna feel like this anymore. And I like, I was a zombie for a couple months. I mean, I had, I didn't laugh. I didn't like smile. It was really, really awful and um, I just, uh, I don't know, I just started feeling that he was really, like, with me and he was really helping me. And then when I went to this Christian camp, I guess, I didn't, I didn't so much, some of the things that they would talk about, I didn't so much agree with, but I just, I really felt him there, I guess. Like, I, I just, it just, like I said, in that prayer group with all those people and, you know, there, there were people just having their hands on you and just praying for you and like, just, you know, I want, you know, just everything's going to be okay and whatever you, you are praying for, you know, we're praying for you. And that just really, um, it was that overwhelming feeling that everything was going to be okay. And then from then on, I, you know, everything was okay. <laughs> I guess it was just, I was more level headed and I was more, you know, myself again and, um, the hurts healed. So it was that is probably the most um, amazing part of my life with God and my walk with God. That was really, really quite uh, wonderful, I guess. Do you remember those moments in prayer and what happened for you? Um, just, yeah, I guess just that overwhelming, I don't know, just... Um, like when it all went okay or when it, <laughs> when it wasn't okay. I just, yeah, I just... It was just really, it was really powerful, I guess. It was just really powerful with, you know, all those people there just praying for you and then praying for yourself, obviously, and then just, and then everything just all of a sudden, it was like after the prayer, it, it was like a weight had been lifted off kind of thing. And, and um, yeah, I just, I just literally instantly felt so much better. And it was just this overwhelming emotional just happiness, I guess, that just, it was, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty powerful. It's neat. Mm -hmm. And um, what was the first time in your life you felt like you had to or chose to rely upon God? Well, you know, like I spoke about before with my mom, sorry about cancer thing, but there's even been something more recent. Um, I usually do these big tours up here in Canada, and um, last year they didn't use me for any of them except for at the, at the very end. Um, there was two tours I was not included in, and then there was a, the one I was included in was actually, and it's really funny because the guy who, who books me on these tours has always told me to stay away from gospel music. And then he asked me to do a small gospel set in these Christmas tours that they did. Now, let me go back a little bit farther. I was financially struggling, spiritually struggling, physically struggling. I lost about 30 pounds in about, you know, three, four months. 
you know, and I, and I, and I needed it. it it's really funny because during the time when you go through these struggles, these down times, you just, you don't see God through it. Most people don't. And I didn't. I got to be honest, I didn't. But through it all, it took God like taking me down to the depths. Because some, you know, it, my, one of my favorite verses is, in my weakness, his strength is made perfect. It's one of my favorite verses. And because it totally, it, it exemplifies God's work in our life. Because usually humans, spiritually, emotionally, we are, we think we're strong enough. We think we're good enough to do it on our own. Most people do. And, and sometimes the only way for God to finally work through you completely is to get you down on your knees, hands and knees, and, and you can't you can't even crawl. You know you're so you're so upset and so depressed and so downtrodden. And I and I find that that's what happened to me. Like this, just this last year, um, I was. I mean, you can ask her. Like I cried for days every day. I cried just consistently. I was just like, what is God doing with me? You know, where is he? What does he want to do with me? Why, why am I doing what I'm doing? Uh, I, nobody cares. If I'm here, if I'm there, if I'm gone, if I'm, if I'm doing Elvis, if I'm not, if I'm, if I'm even alive. You know, I told her that many days. And she's like, Ben, you need, you need to get some help. You need to get out of this. This isn't right. And I was like, I know it's not, but I just feel this way. You know, I feel like, and so I was financially struggling. I wasn't hardly, God always brought me through. I almost didn't pay my bills, but he brought me through. He brought me just enough. And, you know, and I was physically not taking care of myself. And God said to me, you know what, your, temp your body's a temple, my temple. And if you don't take care of it, no one will. So you need to get yourself, you need to start eating different, and you start exercising, and you start just taking care of yourself. Because you're not showing me that you're, you're doing what, you're not being a good steward with what I've given you. And I was like, oh boy, that's a, that's a mouthful. That's something to hear. I mean, nobody wants to hear that, right? Um, and so it took... You know, like I said, this guy never wanted me to do gospel music. And then it's amazing because I was praying and I was losing weight and I was changing all these things in my life. Finally got out of that, that deep hole, you know. God pulled me out of it and, and, I, and I changed my whole life almost. I changed all kinds of things. And, um, and then he, he hires, you know, really, really didn't hire me, but more or less just asked me to do this, to do this three gospel song and I remember what the songs were they were crying in the chapel peace in the valley and how great thou art and I'd never sang how great thou art on stage before I'd never sang it live before people my dad had always done the 70s thing and um, I just said God you know I sure I'd love to do it and he said um, well we'd like you to do this small gospel set in his Christmas shows which I was really amazed about you know how God works through him uh, God worked through me to work through him it's just like Really, I, I was kind of shocked almost, because I was at the show. She was she was singing backup for these shows, and I was not part of the show. I just was taking her because it was sometimes an hour or two hour drives, um, and I was backstage just waiting for her to go on. You know, just kind of waiting around so I didn't have to drive all the way back and then all the way back again. And he said, "You know, Ben, we'd like to use you. I'd like to do a gospel set." <laughs> like totally dropped my jaw to the ground. But you know, God really works. And it's funny because I, I actually have rela lately, and even in the last three months, said thanks, Lord, for that time. No matter how hard it was, it was the worst, one of the worst times in my life. No matter how hard it was, it was, it was necessary. Got me out of this stagnant. You know, I was stagnant, and and and, and so it's really kind of awakened me, you know, spiritually. And so, I, it, it's it's not something you want to thank him for in the time. But then, you know how, you probably have seen this in your own life, we, we all have where there's, there's these things we go through, you know, like footprints in the sand. Where were you, God? He's like, what do you mean? I was carrying you through that. And that, that always gets me kind of shook up, you know. It's just kind of like a, an, an awakening almost. It's like, wow, God really, He can carry us when we need it most and we, we don't even think He's there, you know. But So that's... What do you think this new chapter in your life's about now that you've been shook up? Uh, uh, the old, the old adage, you know, he is the potter, we are the clay. Just being able to be molded in the image he wants to make us, you know, and and me especially is like, I, I think that's he had to take me through all of these things to get me to be able to be moldable, you know, before I was just hard and and it's like he almost I don't mean to be like think think that God's like mean or something but sometimes he has to throw us on the ground and and heat us up so the, the mold will kind of go down you know go back to the way it was and then he can shape us again 
and I think that's kind of where I'm I feel you know I've felt really strongly about doing this gospel show and when we've actually done one since we've done a full gospel show and it was it was man I tell you if you if you if you get in the will of God you know that if you're on the fence Satan never bothers you he never bugs you he just lets you do whatever you want but when you make a conscious step over that fence Boy, he'll throw everything he can at you. You know, he sees that you're changing. Oh, I don't want that. I don't want you to change. I want you to be where you were. You're stagnant. You're 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 unuseful for God. But when I went through all of this, I, I jumped over the fence and said, you know what? I'm going to go full bore. And man, we had just I mean, to get this gospel show off the ground, we had so many things that happened. I mean, my my one of my guitar players just left, quit playing, and we had to start over. And and but you know what? It all happened, and God was glorified through it. And there were people in the audience that were crying, and and you know and and. For whatever reason they were crying, you know, I don't know that, but I know that some way God was able to use me to touch them, and so that's that's kind of how I see it. So, and that's how I met you. Yep. Heber, you, I told my friend, well, I'll know who to ask. Yep. I, mean, I didn't ask anybody else. No, I know. I know. Just you. Yeah. You talked about the gospel concert at the end of your set Saturday night, and you said you all will be blessed by coming. Yeah. So little things. Yeah. Tell me about the two of you meeting. Well, that's just crazy to <laughs> um, It's where we met you. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, it's actually in this, like, this, our story, I guess, kind of really, it's just, it, it's kind of like, that can't just be coincidence. You know, um, there were so many things, like, I just all of a sudden became an Elvis fan. Um, like six or seven months before uh, the actual festival. And my parents were like, oh, well, she's really getting this, this Elvis kick, you know, let's go on vacation. So let's just go to this Penticton Elvis festival. And because um, my mom had heard about it from a woman, uh, she was at a store and uh, she was telling her about it. So we went to this festival and um, so yeah, so that's my side and I know. Well, and, and she, and the funny thing is about, I don't know, probably you know a week before she didn't even want to go to the festival she just thought you know what this is going to be a waste of my time and me on the other hand this was my first competition really so i i told mom and dad you know i don't want to go i i just i don't want to do it i don't want to i don't want to be you know so stressed out and stuff i just don't want to go and then it all came out to where we we did go and we came to the festival the penticton elvis festival where we met you as well uh in 2005 we didn't meet you in 2005. We met you in 2010, <laughs> but but we met each other in 2005, and it was like she came up and she was she was pretty young at that point. She was only 16, and I was 24 almost. Um, and so we kind of like uh, it was it was a really weird instance because like she came up and I knew there was a connection immediately, um, and it was the the the, str the craziest thing was that. So we met the whole weekend, and our parents met the same weekend. So it was like this overwhelming, like All of irony, almost. Time. You know, it's like there wasn't yeah. any, there wasn't any like you know embarrassing moments or something. Oh, I gotta yeah. meet your parents. You're gonna meet my parents. It was just kind of like that. We're so all like one big family. Exactly. Right away. We met immediately. My parents. It's actually funny because before we even spoke, I think, didn't my dad talk to your parents? No, it was about the same time. Uh, Sunday at the finals. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where um. My my stepdad and my mom went to go out and get a drink, and I'm waiting, holding the seats, and uh, like 45 minutes later, they come back, and I'm like, "What were you doing?" And they're like, "Oh, well, you know, we were talking to Ben's parents," and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> goodness." Um, so, but I guess he was talking to them about religion and yeah, stuff and like they were that as well. Yeah, talking about God and, and, the, and, the, and the basis that you know where we all stood, you know, and. and um, and the most, the, the, really, the most amazing thing was that they have a timeshare for RVs. You know, they, they they actually. Wait, wait. I think I need to say my parents and I used to travel like everywhere, like everywhere. So. All of North America. <laughs> all of North America, and for the summer, my parents decided that this one random place that we would go to would be Spokane, Spokane Washington. Washington. So after the Penticton Elvis Festival in August, we were going to drive to Spokane and stay at one of these RV parks in Spokane for a week. In September. Like, I which know, is the amazing. most random thing because it's like out of all the places, let's go to Spokane. Like it's just, it was just so weird. Anyways, continue. So yeah, so we, we I mean, you know, the irony, it's not ironic, you know, my, my mom has a saying and it's, it's, 
kind of funny. She says it all the time, but she said it's not odd, it's God. You know, it's, it's one of those situations where you, I know, it is, it is pretty, it's, pre, it's pretty hilarious, but. But it's true. <laughs> if you can only see him laughing on the other side of the camera. <laughs> great. But we, we uh, um, you know, and so that, we, we talked for about a month over the phone, and then she came, and, and we felt we needed an immediate connection. Um, and then we dated for a while, and then we actually, I, I got kind of scared, I got to be honest, I got because I knew that this was not just a flash-in-the-pan relationship. I knew that this was going to be a long-term relationship, and I knew that I might eventually even marry her, and I, and I got kind of scared, so I, I, I broke it off with her for a while, about, what, about six months? Seven. Seven months. I she, remember she knows, these things. She, she knows these things. <laughs> and it which was a very dark time for both of us, because we, we had some, you know, it was it was... For me, it was like, I don't know, you know, I should I should know what I want, but, and I did know what I wanted, but I was so scared of the whole just plunging head first into this relationship. And, and so um, it came down to the point where it was almost, it was a little bit before the next Penticton Elvis Festival, wasn't it? And, yeah. and I, she said about a week before I called her, right? Because I called you right before the festival, didn't I? And we started talking again. And she said, D didn't you say anything about a week before you said, I can't talk to you anymore, Ben, you it's just too difficult it, or something? Yeah, it was like, it was really weird. It was a couple weeks before and I just kind of, because like, you know, the whole time you're thinking like, oh, you know, we'll get back together, we'll get back together. And then I just came to this point where I was like, I just can't, I can't do it anymore. Because I, I mean, I was in love with him like, I mean, seriously, it's usually the guy saying this in these stories, but right after that weekend, I was telling my friends, I am going to marry that man. She and did. She my came friends back were like, her... oh, you guys, you're just, you're crazy. You're, he's, <laughs> he's, you know, it's just so crazy. And he lives in the States and it's never going to work. And I was like, nope, it's going to happen. Knew it. It's just, I just, so it was like the whole time I was just holding on to that. And it's like, it's, this can't, this can't be it. Like, it's going to, we're going to be together and all this stuff. And yeah, just before it was just, yeah, I can't. I can't talk to you anymore because it's just too hard for me. I still love you and I can't live like and that. Every, and, and every time she talked to me, it was harder. You know, it's it's one of those things when you really love someone or you, you know, you have a best friend. You know, that's that's kind of wrong to you in a way. It's like every time you talk to him, it like makes the wound deeper. It makes it hurt more. It's like pouring salt into the wound. And so, like, I mean, it was amazing because she said about a week before I call a week. She said about another week she was going to tell me, like, I just can't do this anymore. And I called her out of the blue and just said, hey, I miss talking to you. We should start talking more. And then I came to the festival in 06 and realized I had all these feelings still. And, and then we got back together after that. You know, to make a long story like a short, days and, later. And, ever, and ever since we've been together, you know. Yeah. But I mean, it's been it's been tough because I live in Spokane and she lives up here still. We've been married for what 16 months now, almost. We got married on Valentine's Day, February 14th, uh, 2009, and uh, went to Kauai for a honeymoon. It was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it was a wonderful time. But um, we've had so many people come in and out of our lives that have helped us so much. I have a dear friend who um, blessed us financially um so much like helped us pay for the wedding and helped us get help get us on our honeymoon it was just a such a blessing her name is joyce brodzinski and uh, she lives in the tri-cities area but you know it's it's just funny how many people can come into your life and 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 like bless you you know when, when you least expect it it's it's god's god's hand you know you, you see and that's what i mean sometimes the big thing yeah she helped us financially that's the big thing but there's all these little things like that took me to meet her I actually, I'm kind of, I'm kind of digressing, but in order to meet this woman, I got a show from another friend or of an acquaintance in the Elvis world who last minute canceled on her for this Miss Tri-Cities pageant. They were doing a Viva Las Vegas theme, which is really interesting because like I was on the side of the stage doing my Elvis thing and then there was these people, then there was all the women dancing and, and doing all their, you know, whatever they do in the Miss Tri-Cities pageant. Because um, I was paying attention to what I was doing. I was, really wasn't watching them, but uh, um, that's how I met this woman. And then she became like my second grandmother almost. It, it's just, God leads our steps. You know, he directs us when we allow him to, to direct us. I think sometimes we're so headstrong on the big picture. Like I said, we miss the small thing along the way. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important to see those little things, you know. Well, it's, it's really funny because growing up, you know, I was born in 81. Um, I, I did not like Elvis at all. I did not grow up. I grew up with Elvis in the family because my, my dad did an Elvis tribute when he was my age. Like when he was like 20, 23, 24, 
um, you know, when he was younger, in his band, they did like a, a small Elvis um, set, I'd say. He was very good at it. Um, he got out of the business six months before Elvis died. I really believe that if he would have been in the business when Elvis died, that he probably would have been, been went into full-time tributing of Elvis. Be, and, but that's not, that wasn't God's plan. And so he got out of the music business, went full-time ministry and worked restaurant business. And, um, and then him, him and my mom had me, of course. And, and I was a um, total miracle baby because my mom had endometriosis. She wasn't supposed to have children. And my dad's mom had a tubal ligation and he was born after that. So there's a reason for everyone being here, right? I mean, we really see that, you know. Um, so... Where was I going? Um, so basically, like, I didn't really have a huge, I wasn't a fan of Elvis. I, I didn't have a fondness for Elvis all of my life growing up. Um, and then to, to try to make a long, long story short, my mom saw a picture of Elvis in like 2001, the end of 2001, in, in, um, in a store and said, you know, you kind of resemble Elvis. Well, at this point I had a shaved head and I didn't care. I really didn't care. I, I ultimately was like, whatever. So for my dad's birthday in October, I bought him an Elvis CD, a greatest hit CD, and I gave it to him and he wasn't listening to it much. So I said, you know, I'm gonna try this out. Why not? If I don't like it, I'll give it back to him, whatever. So I said, hey dad, can I borrow it and, and listen to it a bit? And he said, sure. So I borrowed it and I really fell in love with the music. I really didn't realize that this man had so much charisma and talent and, 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 and just such a gift from God, you know, ultimately. Um, and so at the end of that year, I went out to a show, to a headliner show, and it was a competition. And they said to me, um, and it's an Elvis lookalike competition, but you don't have to sing, they said. So I didn't study, I didn't practice anything. And they, I get there and they're like, what are you going to sing? I'm saying, I haven't learned anything. So I actually wrote Love Me Tender on my hand and sang it acapella. And I lost to this guy who was a local boy. And I said, you know, and I watched this headliner do his show. And I said, you know, if he can do this, I can do this as well. You know, I can do this. And so I put myself into it for the next six months. And I did a little show for my parents. And they're like, they're kind of freaked out a little bit. Because they're like, he doesn't like Elvis at all. And now he wants to be a tribute artist. How does that happen? Like the trans, there, there's no, there's no, uh, um, progression you know what I mean usually there's a small progression like you love Elvis when you're young and then somebody tells you you look like Elvis and then you know you start singing and then Elvis but no it was just like wham it's like that you know like the door opens and there it is and I really felt God was leading me into it because I think the you know Elvis loved he loved he, he was such a he was a giving man he was a philanthropist he was he was um just an amazingly talented man, but ultimately he loved to do gospel music. And that was his heart and his passion. And you can actually see that when he sings gospel music, his whole, his voice even was different. It had a different quality, you know, he, he really loved it. It came from the heart. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Probably just made a huge noise, but um, um, so yeah, so that that's how, that's how this whole thing happened, you know, and it's like the faith, it, it's kind of, Interesting, because I didn't know what I was going to do in life. You know, I just, I'd been laid off at uh, this job I was working, and I was uh, laid off at another job I was working. I was like, what, you know, what, what am I supposed to do, Lord? And then he just led me into this. It was just really, you know, it's not honest God, you know. <laughs> so, so that's kind of it. I mean, how does all this, like. Yeah, what, what is the connection well, for you? Well, I think it's just, like, my parents, again, my parents. <laughs> um, they just, we had a family reunion. Um one summer and we were staying at this this place it was this big camping place and so it was kind of in the back of our minds and uh after words that this place had been existed and probably like a month or two months after our family reunion um they were having this elvis show this elvis dinner kind of thing and i'd always kind of grown up with elvis but not like but my parents were huge fans or anything like that it was just kind of whatever, we'd go on road trips and throw in a Willie Nelson CD and then throw in an Elvis CD and then throw in a Billy Joel or whatever. Billy really Nelson and Elvis. So, <laughs> so, such so, dire opposites. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so it was like Elvis was always around, but it was kind of like, I enjoyed the music, but I was like, no, nah, whatever, you know, I don't really care. I was into, you know, Spice Girls and stuff like that back then. <laughs> um, but, um, so we went to this dinner and the, it was really weird, the, the tribute artist wasn't really that good, but I just, I fell in love with the music and it was like, just literally like, I went crazy searching for that CD that we'd like always listen to on our road trips. And 
um, I just listened to it over and over and over and over and over again. And I like literally- She wore ridges in it, became like a record. <laughs> <laughs> like everything I did, like, you know, brushing my teeth, do I want you, I need, do I love you? And tanning out on the porch to uh, love me tender. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, just like, I mean, it was like everywhere. Like I wouldn't stop listening to it. And then, you know, and which is so weird for me as a 16 year old in high school with so many different influences and um i just i don't know i like i just feel like well she was also in plays a lot so yeah. she was a stage actress as well so for her to like get into elvis was kind of a you know not not a fluke but it, it had it had it had you know necessity yeah. in and her it life, was just so. it was just so all of a sudden too which was so crazy and it was just like it was like Meh, Elvis, and then like Elvis. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and then just it just kind of, I don't know. I guess and I just, I just really fell in love with, um, just yeah, the music. Even not mm -hmm. even. I know there's a lot of people who are like, oh, Elvis, I like to listen to him because he's so attractive. <laughs> but I just, I don't know. I just, I just love the music, and um, yeah. it's actually kind of, kind of funny. After the Penticton Elvis Festival, um, the first year that we went, when I met Ben in uh, 2005, there was the gospel show every Sunday, and he sang a couple gospel songs that I really liked. And one of the I, songs I sang, uh, Joshua Fit the Battle, that yeah. was one of them, and I don't remember the other one. That was a Peace Valley. in the Valley, yep. Mm -hmm. And that's another one of my favorite gospel songs, Peace in the Valley is yeah. wonderful. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, no worries. Um, but then, like that, that weekend, after like the whole weekend had kind of finished, um, I purchased a novel's gospel CD and just listen to that all the time. And it was just, I just, I love, I loved his gospel music. And yeah, he definitely had a different, different sound when he sang it. And I mean, like they would, you hear stories about like from like Elvis's entourage about how um, after the shows, they just go up to, I guess like the hotel room or wherever mm -hmm. they were and just sit around a piano and just sing gospel music for hours. But 1975 to 76, sometime in there, you know, Elvis always warmed up in the studios with, with um, gospel music. That was the way he did it. And um, it got to the point where he was warming up for hours before. That was his best way of doing, of getting warmed up. So he'd sing gospel for like three or four hours while he was wasting his studio's time. And RCA finally said, he came in one day and RCA said, you can't do this anymore, Elvis. And he said, who said that? And he goes, well, the, the, the manager of the studio said that. And he goes, well, I'm, I'm done recording with you then. And he never recorded with them again. He recorded in the Jungle Room then for the rest of the time he recorded in Graceland. So it's really interesting because he was so, he got to the point where he's like, you know what? I want to do gospel music. And I think he would have done it full time if he could have. I really think he would have been a full time gospel singer. I think if he would have lived longer, he would have went into full-time gospel music, you know, because I think about all the bands. He had the Jordanaires, he had the Sweet Inspirations, he had the Stamps Quartet, he had the Imperials. All of those people are gospel. I mean, they're they're gospel quartets and, you know, just singers. So I, I think he always surrounded himself by those type of people, you know. And like she said, you know, he would. He would do gospel till wee hours of the morning, you know. He just, that's how much he loved it, so. Yeah. Just to ask you questions. What are you most grateful for, Vanessa? <sighs> I have so many things that I'm thankful for. Um, oh boy. I. <laughs> part of the, the ambiance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. The beautiful trees and, and the car. And but the car, uh, yeah. um, I think. I don't know. I'm really grateful for. Thank you, Lord. Yes. <laughs> I'm grateful for that car, not beeping anymore. <laughs> um, I'm grateful for my family. Um, I've had a really, really strong backbone from them um, for my whole life. And I'm really thankful that they've been there for me and um, just to, to make me who I am. Um, I'm really thankful for Ben, very grateful for Ben. Um, I think in... All in all, I think he helped me to be a better um, Christian. I think he brought me closer to God. Um, and I know that he's always there for me and we always have each other. And uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm so grateful about everything. I mean, there's a, I'm glass half full. So, <laughs> so yeah, I just, I mean, I just have such a strong 
family. And I think all together, like with his parents and him and my parents and my family, I think that's probably what I'm most grateful for in my life. What about you, Ben? I mean, I, I think the same thing. You know, I've always had a strong, um, um, godly basis. Um, I'm especially thankful for her as well, you know. Just like the Lord, how the Lord brought us together is nothing short of a miracle, you know. Um, and I'm, I'm so thankful for the talents and abilities he's given me to use for him. You know, I, I, I sometimes wonder, like, why Elvis, why this? I wonder it all the time. <laughs> and there's been a lot of times where I've said to the Lord, Lord, I'm laying the thing down. I'm just, I'm just going to stop doing it if you want me to, you know. If you, and, and every time I've had a success, you know, if I, God's always kept me humble, always. Always kept me humble because it's not, it's not about me. It's about Him working through me, you know, giving me the talents and abilities to bless other people through it. You know, it's, it's funny because you don't, it doesn't have to be a gospel song that can touch someone's life. You know, if, if you sing Love Me Tender and it reminds them of a time when their husband was alive or their wife was alive, when things were good in their life, if you can take them back for five minutes or ten minutes or whatever so they don't have problems, you've done a good deed for someone. You know, you've, 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 Use what God has given you to bless that person. You know, it doesn't. You don't always have to force God down someone's throat. They can see that through your life, through your being, through your, uh, and 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 that's the whole thing about it. I just want to be used by God. You know, that's the whole thing. So I mean, the I'm thankful for her, especially. I'm thankful for my parents. I'm thankful for the gifts and talents. I'm, and God, oh, I'm thankful for God so much. You know, He's just led me, and it's been amazing. So. <laughs> you go specifically what I mean you have a message I mean people around the world will see this what's your message no matter how bad things get no matter how bad um, your life seems um, God is always there for you he's always he's always in your life you know if, if you choose to let him be in your life you know he's a perfect gentleman he never forces you to have him he, he allows you to have his 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 love and his guidance and his protection, but we don't have to take it. You know what I mean? So I, I would say that um, as a verse, I always, I always go back to Philippians 4:13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, and that's been my life verse. And 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 I find that it's it says it all. You know, but I also think that on the other side of the coin. God can allow us or can can give us the strength to do all things that he has asked us to do you know and and we have all these we all have dreams and, and goals and things and, and and you know with with God these things can become reality but I also find that when you start to get closer to God the things you thought were important before become wood hay and stubble you know it's it's more about witnessing and, and bringing people to Christ so I, I would say you know focus on God and have faith in in everything you know because faith is what keeps us st strong with God you know and and so um, that's really my message you know yeah I completely agree with this message <laughs> actually no it's really funny because when when you were when you were um, thinking about the quote that you always that you yeah. always say I was literally I was saying that in my mind and then you were like well the quote that I uh, you mean the, the verse? Passage that the passage, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. I'm fun. <laughs> um, She's beautiful too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I just I love being in front of people and I love helping people and. Um, I was in Girl Guides when I was younger, so I did a lot of... I did a, <laughs> you want people to know that. You were in Girl Guides. I was in Girl Guides. I, just, I did a lot of volunteer stuff. I just, I just love being around people and talking to people. And I mean, I work in customer service, so I mean, obviously it has its downs, but I mean, a lot of times it has its ups. And, you know, when you don't know that you're helping someone, you could be helping someone with, you know, just what you're saying to them. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I just... I, yeah. And Ben? What do you want people to know about you? Um, that I love God with all my heart, and that I've, regardless of struggles and stuff, that I, I've always tried to do the best I can, you know, and, and, and I've always tried to witness to people through singing or whatever venue I've had, you know, and um, 
um, that I love my family and, you know, that I, that I hope to be the man that God has always wanted me to be, you know, and that I hope to be the man that, you know, a good husband and, and maybe someday a good father, who knows, you know, and, and, uh, just those type of things, you know, that's what I hope people would know about me. That I don't think I'm Elvis, <laughs> you know. But that I love what I do. I really love. I love this. I love this tribute thing. It's it's wonderful. It's been a wonderful way to reach out, and I've met so many people because of it. You know, would have never met her. I would have never met you, probably. So, so um, yeah. So. Shall we, so. Shall we finish with uh, you guys singing something together? Oh golly. We could. Yeah. What song? I don't know. Well. I don't know. A gospel song. You pick. I'll just sing along. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do How Great to Art? Oh, I'm on the spot. I'll forget the words. Okay, well then let's not do How Great to Art. Let's do, know. um... You want to do In the Garden? Do you know that? I know the chorus. Because that's all I've ever had to say. <laughs> you do know the chorus? Yeah. Okay. Want to do it? Okay, sure. Okay, we're going to do a song called In the Garden. I hope you enjoy it. I come to, no, that's too high. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known thank you thank you I'd like to have uh, my uh, wife, my son, and my daughter-in-law, new daughter-in-law, met here six years ago. Can you believe that? Ben and Vanessa. I think you might recognize Ben Klein. And they have been married a year on Valentine's Day. How about this? They met right here. Pretty cool. And do you remember when he proposed to her? Yeah. Right here on this stage on a gospel morning, yeah? Check, check, check. There you oh, go. okay, there we go. God has a way, huh? I need a little bit more on the monitors if I could. Ooh. Oh, I, really got some I don't know if it's me or who it is. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Ready? Oh, yeah. 
check, check. Okay. How you guys doing? How about it for all my lovely family, huh? I need a lot more up here. I just can't hear nothing. I'm sorry. So we'll get this worked out. You guys all having a good time today? You get any sleep? Not much, huh? Well, they, they want me to do an extra song, if that's all right. So, um, oh, that's better. Hey, there we go. Thank you. Uh, this one's called uh, Crying in the Chapel. I hope you enjoy it. Bear with me, I haven't done this track yet, so we gotta start it over. <laughs> we do. music up here, if that's all right. You know, we're never happy, are we? <laughs> How about it for all the rest of the guys, huh? Everybody who's worked so hard to do this weekend, you know, we thank each one of you for coming out, because without you, none of this would be possible. And uh, we'd like to thank the king of rock and roll also for putting, for making all this happen, you know? Yeah, without him, uh, well, well, firstly, without God, we wouldn't be here. But without Elvis, uh, none of this would be possible, so... How about it for Elvis, huh? I'd like to do a song for you called Joshua Fit the Battle. I hope you like it. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, around Jericho, around Jericho. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, and walls came tumbling down. Now God knows that. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, Jericho, uh, Jericho. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, and walls come tumbling down. Good morning, Sister Mary. Good morning, Brother John. Well, I won't stop and talk with you and tell you how I've come along. I know you You've heard about Joshua, he was the son of Nun. He never stopped his work until, until the work was done. The God knows that Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, and walls come tumbling down. You may talk about your men of Gideon, you may brag about your men of Saul, but it look like good old Joshua at the battle of Jericho. Of Jericho, he marched with spirit and hand. Go below 
will ever rap Only Joshua cried Cause the battle is in my hand I got no that Come on, sing along Jericho around Jericho around Jericho Joshua fit the battle of Jericho When the walls come tumbling down You may talk about your men of Gideon You may brag about the king of Saul But it's not like good old Joshua At the battle of Jericho They tell me great God That Joshua's spear was with my toe feet long and upon his hip was a double-edged sword and his mouth was a gospel horn yet bold and brave he stood salvation in his hand go below and never ramp on the Joshua cried cause the devil can't do you no harm God knows that Joshua fit the battle of Jericho 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 Joshua fit the battle of Jericho when the walls come tumbling down up to the walls of Jericho he marched with spear in hand Go below, they will ramp on to Joshua cry Cause the battle is in my hand Then the lamb ram shakles began to blow The trumpets began to sound Oh, Joshua shouted glory And the walls come tumbling down The God knows that Joshua fit the battle of Jericho Jericho, now Jericho Joshua fit the battle of Jericho When the walls come tumbling down Thank you very much.